Hey, this is Bill, and uh, what we're going to do right now is cover the installation and the launch of setting up SemBlaster. Uh, this is the second version. This is an email marketing tool that you can send to a couple hundred leads a day, really just a one-time purchase of the um, program, and then using Gmail as a free email. And that's what I'm going to show you here now, but I'm assuming that you've already installed it and that you have a lead list that's going to look something like this. Um, you can ask and see if I have any leads or they're pretty easy to come by. Uh, actually on the site we have something, uh, I think one or two sites where you can buy lots of leads every day. But uh, it's going to have some kind of header up here at the top and I point this out and you'll see why email, first name, last name, address, etc. That's what a good lead list should look like. So I have my lead list and, and you actually don't need to have it open. I was just showing you what it would look like and I wanted to point out that header column with the column titles in it. Um, next, I actually pre-typed my email that I'm going to go ahead and paste right into SendBlaster. And uh, we can just we can just leave that down below. And what I've got here, this is the Send Blaster icon here. You can see it. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Okay. <clears throat> so here's our program. And what we want to do is go ahead and compose a message here. We're just going to move right down the list. Actually, let's go to settings first. Uh, these are all the settings that. Um, was in those fields you'll see email field 2 4 <clears throat> and it's going to actually let us match those up once we import the leads so you can leave those I just want you to be familiar with fields security settings I mean, it doesn't really matter to me if this is secure and then we've got some advanced settings and I just want to go through all these to make sure we don't miss something this is actually important. This is where people can subscribe, unsubscribe. Um, and I need to actually correct my email. That's what we'll do. <clears throat> See, this is one important point here to make this work properly. It's a very powerful program. And you'll see why. So we want to be able to have people unsubscribe that complies with all canned spam laws. This is actually going to be different bounce back custom formats that you can add <clears throat> and I will go over those a little later. Okay great. So let's go to compose message. Oh sorry let's go ahead and uh, import some leads actually. Let's create a list first. It's still bit Excel. It's going to be HBA add, and I'm just going to change this to 0812. Then I'll know what my problem is. Okay, so now we have that list, and I'm now going to go to import leads, and I'm actually going to move them to the 812 list. Export, export. Um, there's nothing there. I'm going to find that one which was 812. Oh, new scrub, that's what I had. Name the file. Oops, you know what? just want to see that again. Okay. New scrub, okay. Mm. first row contains field names. That's what I missed. This is going to go ahead and take that top uh, row <clears throat> okay. and to this list here. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and compose our message and um, on my file here. Now 
I chose my family and I really have been watching the Olympics lately and I find that I enjoy them and it's still probably a, a semi-relevant theme it hasn't been that long so one thing you want to do in your marketing number number one is be personable and real because this is cold email right so you want to be personable real and in this case I'm really offering something of value the NBC Olympics you can stream them all online <clears throat> I really think people would enjoy that to be honest um, so what we're doing is kind of give them something and you gotta also remember that Gmail or Google when you send these out they're actually going to be scanning that text and seeing if it looks like spam so what I've done here is just created something with value and you're actually going to see something pretty cool here as we keep going but um, I put a signature on there I actually put a disclaimer that's like a normal business email practice and then I put an unsubscribe I remember that's the word that was in the settings so that when people reply if they have unsubscribed in the subject line it will automatically take them uh, from the list so uh, what am I, now this is an HTML email up top this is plain text here primarily you just want to make sure that you have these long URLs don't put like hypertext um, uh, links in there on the word like click here just doesn't seem to convert perhaps as well as a normal link that people are used to clicking on okay so I have my thing here done and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this spam check oops <laughs> I was expecting something a little harder um, that actually had nothing now watch this financial wealth right, let's just be silly here and use uh, financial wealth Viagra now look at our spam check I see that 2.4 why I'm pretty surprised I thought it would have actually gone higher than that um, but anyways <clears throat> the less you have of a spam score the better off you're gonna be because that's going to sneak through Google's filters. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up some Google Analytics. Now, using Google Analytics to track our... This again, you're using your um, Google account. You should definitely have a Google account set up for this. I happen to have one under a pseudonym and uh, so here we sign up if we don't already have an account the account name is going to be good excel it was 0801 2001 HBA email All right we're tracking this email website URL Excel treasure dot com slash amp boy now that's gonna cause another glitch right there but um, that's the best way to do it probably I should take that HTTP off because it's right here time zone where I am industry retail with other Google products only oh, I see they want to share information I'm gonna opt not to right now I'm gonna create the account okay so this is where it gets tricky actually um, you'll have to send me some tracking code for the website so you will have to copy this and email it to me and tell me what your username is and I can go ahead and put this on your page 
but you'll have to do that. And so I'm going to have to go do that on my own. Okay, so I went and added that code to my site so that we have the tracking set up. Um, that's really helpful. A single domain, BitExcel Treasure. Mm, that's really it. Save. We should be all set. I actually set up the code. So now we're good. Okay, and what I'm going to do, so we go back to our compose message, and we had our import of leads, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to go to, um, to email. Once we hit send, it's going to start bringing up some information here. So that's my distribution list here's the gmail address sender's name is george reply to address this is very important for spam that you have the same thing and we have to make sure our smtp server settings are set up properly so for gmail and that's why i recommend a gmail account it's smtp dot gmail dot com port 587 secure server authentication required username is the email address then your password retry with the deck uh, this is good and then do a connection test tells me connection established that means it's reaching out to my gmail account now what you have to do is set up these sendings here pause between messages in seconds I want to be uh, conservative the research that I've done shows that you can um, send about 500 emails a day with Gmail but I you know I'd rather go real conservative not have any problems and be able to keep doing it. So I figured, what does it take me to typically write an email this size? Let's say five minutes. So we want to take five, multiply that by 60, 60 seconds, and we get 300. So wait for 300 seconds in between messages. Now this is if you were going to send out blocks of emails like 5, 10, 15, whatever, I'm going to put pause between blocks of here. I got to figure this out. Okay, I actually decided that I'm, I am going to do one email every 300 seconds. That's going to give me 288 emails a day. That's a good conservative number. Um, if you wanted to put out 400 emails a day, you would set this to 216. But then Gmail might close you down. So this is really better. By the way, if you didn't realize, it was 86,400 seconds in a day. But anyway, <laughs> so we're, we're going to have uh, no pause in between blocks. Messages per block is one. Timeout connections um, you don't want to add too many although it doesn't even matter just one email so this can be just very aggressive stuff and I just really suggest you be careful with that because Google is very smart so we're going to leave that all of our stuff is set up here this is going to be follow up later this stuff here will actually deal with our um, bounces so here we go I'm going to start sending it. It says to close an antivirus. So I'm actually going to do that. Make sure I have no antivirus running. And I want that to show again because I didn't realize that. And I'm having a, there we go. And um, right here it shows 1,755 emails to send. 
it just sent to the first one and says OK. Now, so that's going to send an email every five minutes. And uh, now I just go to bed and let that work all night long. And that's it.